Okay, we're in a garden bed and we're gonna be looking for purslane. Let's see, I see some peppers, some borage, calendula over there, big old zucchini. But where is the purslane? You gotta get closer. It's this stuff down here. Oop. See that weird snaky octopusy kind of pinkish fat stem going all over the place. This weed down here. That's what we're looking for. That's the purslane. That's the really good stuff. They're little, little round leaves with little fat pad leaves. These are kind of late in the fall, so they're not quite as lovely as they could be, but uh, still delightful. And that's what we're looking for. You can see it's all over here. It's a really great ground cover for your garden. As you can see, it grows real low and covers the ground. So it'll keep some of those other weeds out. But at the same time, it's something you can harvest and eat yourself. Wonderful little plant, really. <clears throat> Food is medicine. Weeds, eat the weeds. I'm going to look for that, once again, that kind of pinkish, reddish, octopus, crawling, little vine-like thing, little puffy pads, little round puffy pads. And it's the leaves that we eat. So gather a big bunch when you're out. Aren't they lovely? Look at them all down there. And okay, we're back in my kitchen. I've gathered a good bundle of purslane. And so let me introduce myself since I skipped that earlier. I'm Dr. Mindy Curry. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And I have a small clinic in Milwaukee, and I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I'm here, I'm just going to talk, while I'm processing this purslane, I'm going to talk about purslane and what its medicinal uses are, its culinary uses are, just some interesting tidbits about purslane. And we're talking Portulaca oleraceae. And this is a common weed in crop fields and lawns throughout Europe, Asia, Mediterranean, Africa, Australia, and even right here in the Pacific Northwest of the USA. Now, there are three common varieties of purslane, the green, the golden, and the large-leaved golden. And basically, purslane, it, what it's really well known for is its omega-3 fatty acid content out of the plant kingdom. This is just the big powerhouse for omega-3s uh, that you can't necessarily um, create in your own body, especially alpha-linoleic acid. It also has got quite a bit of gamma-linoleic acid. And uh, these, and they have basically more omega-3s in purslane than any other green leafy vegetable. And this just makes it a really good source for vegans and vegetarians and people that just don't eat a lot of fatty fish. It's also very high in alpha tocopherols, which is vitamin E, which boosts immune function, reduces blood clots. It's really good for growth and development um, for children, and it can prevent free radical damage to cells, basically anti-aging. Um, but also on top of that, purslane is also very high in ascorbic acid, vitamin C, also vitamin A. It even has a little bit of the B complex vitamins added in there. And go ahead and add in plenty of potassium, magnesium, calcium, and even a substantial amount of iron as well. This uh, lowly pleasant weed is actually a superfood herb, 
with a truly nice flavor that can be used in a number of ways in the kitchen. Um, basically what I've been doing here is just processing the purslane I took out of the garden. It's going to take quite a bit of washing because it's usually pretty dirty right out of the garden. So you want to get all of that uh, just mud and bugs and just any kind of other weed that's stuck to it out of there. We're going to try to take the little pads off of the stems. Stems, not, not my favorite necessarily, but the, the little leaf pads. They're kind of soft, little squishy, jade plant-like little succulent leaf pads. And that's what we're going for. They also have some little flowers on them, and those are fine to eat too. They do have a little seed in there. Uh, I don't mind it much, very small, but in any case, we are just going through and separating the leaf pads. So, Purslane's fat little leaf pads, these possess mucilaginous, slimy substances, which have actually frank medicinal value. Um, in traditional Chinese medicine, they've used Purslane in formulas for hypertension and for diabetes. Oh, oh, back to just the nutritional value. Calorie for calorie, purslane is one of the most nutrient-dense nutrient foods on the planet. So this is just, like I said, a superfood of just wonderful plant nutrition. And this is probably why it's been used by herbalists to treat a variety of issues, from heart health to improved circulation, to skin health, to improving bone bones, to improving sleep quality, for weight management, vision support, liver support, all sorts of things. It's really a super duper food that can increase just the health of, of you. When you start taking this, if you've been in any kind of deficient state, that's going to go away, hopefully, with a, a good nutrient-packed vitamin rich vegetables such as this. So this low sprawling tiny succulent can be eaten raw. It can be put in salads. It can be sauteed, boiled, pickled. It can be drenched in butter. It can be blended into dressings with oil and vinegar. It's got a very slightly sour lemony flavor with a very strong green background, kind of like a spinach-like base taste. It's easy to find as a weed, it's easy to grow in the garden, and it has um, provided necessary sustenance during times of famine when just nothing else is growing. People look around, find this weird little octopus um, fat pads in the ground, and there's food in there. It's really, it doesn't have a lot of carbs in it. It's got a little bit of carbs, a little tiny bit of protein. It's mostly just a really big nutrient dense package. Um, it's a really great little little fat green to add to your diet. Um, one of the contraindications that's possible um, that people with a certain kind of kidney stone, oxalate kidney stones, might have a problem with purslane because purslane does have a, a pretty high oxalate content. Um, so a person might want to add that purslane, want to use it after it's been boiled or add it to yogurt, this can remove a lot of the oxalate. This can remove a lot of the oxalic acid content, if that's a concern for you. Um, it really shouldn't be. Uh, oxalates have been associated with a variety of good health outcomes, so it's it shouldn't be a big fear for you unless you are a problem person that develops problem kidney stones of that type. So basically, here we are in the kitchen. I'm getting a pretty good amount of purslane leaves cleaned up here. And what my plan is, is to make a purslane chimichurri. Now that's an Argentinian sauce, um, basically, that I've modified, or that has been modified by many other people, really, um, to make into a purslane chimichurri instead of just a chimichurri. So... This is basically the recipe comes down to a, a cup of purslane leaves, a cup of parsley leaves, a tablespoon of fresh oregano leaves, three cloves of garlic, uh, about a, a jalapeno or maybe a pinch of pepper flakes, and that's optional, about a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, 
couple tablespoons of red wine vinegar and salt to pepper and pepper to taste. And this is a super easy recipe. Basically, we just blend all that up in a food processor. And I'm going to be making a chicken chimichurri tacos with that once I'm done here. Um, and that's really good. Basically, I'm just taking the chicken, um, barbecuing it on the barbecue, and then chopping it up into little bits with the sauce. I baste the chicken with the chimichurri sauce and then add chimichurri sauce on later on just to really give it that big green flavor. Throwing that in some tortillas with some extra delicious fresh vegetables. And that's giving me a really nice, delicious meal that I hope you'll like. But you can also use a purslane chimichurri and a variety of other methods. I've used it in, say, a pasta salad. I put it in pasta itself with vegetables. Um, you can use it to top vegetables and just have kind of a vegetable fajita instead of a chicken fajita or a chicken taco. Um, it's traditionally, I think it's mostly used with beef, but you can also use the chimichurri sauce with seafood. Um, it's really very versatile sauce that I hope you'll like. So let's, let's see how that turns out. Oh, and here they are, right off the grill. There's the vegetables, the tortillas. This is going to be delicious. So now that I've shown you how to make some wonderful medicine, I want to remind you that it's very important to go see a doctor or a naturopath or at least an herbalist before starting any herbals for your conditions. For one thing, you may not really understand what your diagnosis is. You may think it's just a little bit of this and that that can be treated with some plants when it's really something serious and you're missing it and it could, could be fatal. Um, also, there are interactions between herbs and drugs and there's also contraindications between some of the problems you may be having and the herbs you may think you need. <laughs> So don't start taking anything willy-nilly unless you're sure what's going on. And to be sure, come see a naturopath like me. I'm in Portland, Oregon. I do house calls in the greater Portland area. And I also have an office in Milwaukee.